okay, I didn't realize that. Please join me as we lift our voices in our responsive call to worship. Today is the day mystery unfolds. We glimpse it at the dawning, the dawning of light. Today we recall again God's trustworthy promise. The tomb is empty. The enemy of death is destroyed. Come with amazement and great joy. Come with wonder and praise. Let us shout the good news. Christ is risen. Christ is risen again.
Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Before you're seated, let me invite you just to turn to your neighbors and welcome them to Easter Sunday worship today and, and greet them in the name of our risen Christ. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Grace to you in peace in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is good that we might be gathered together on this Easter Sunday morning, that we might celebrate the good news of Christ's resurrection from the dead, that we might be gathered with one another on this day, both here in the sanctuary as well as online, as we lift our hearts and minds and voices in praise of God together this morning. A special word of welcome to guests and visitors who are with us today. It is always such a great joy for us to share our worship of God together with you. I hope that everyone will take time to sign the friendship pads. They're usually on one end of the pew or the other. This gives us a chance to have a record of all who've come to worship with us here in the sanctuary this morning, as well as a chance perhaps for you to put a name with a face now that you've had a chance to greet one another at the beginning of our service today as those um, our friendship pads are passed down and then passed back through the pew this morning. Guests and visitors, please include your name and address and maybe an email, phone number, some other way that we might be in touch with you in this week that is ahead. Just a chance for us to say welcome and to say thanks, but we are so grateful that you are with us today. If you are looking for a church home, I do hope that you will find unity to be a place of worship and service that God might be calling you to be a part of. If that's the case, you could speak with me, speak with someone sitting near you, that we might follow up on that interest and answer any questions you might have. Also invite you to come next Sunday during Sunday school to the first of our Connections classes. Looking ahead in the bulletin, you'll see that um, this week, thanks to all who have served in Family Promise this week as we hosted a family experiencing homelessness in, in our, um, in our uh, church this week. So thanks for all who are a part of sharing that important ministry. We have a blood drive coming up this week. We will collect our one great hour of sharing offering today. That's a special offering with our denomination that is primarily designated for, uh, for disaster relief. And so encourage you to consider that when the offering time comes today. You'll see opportunities to sign up for a study of Philippians, for Sunday school classes, for the next session of uh, Messy Motherhood, and also for children's choir. If you are a high school graduate or a college graduate, you need to make sure you get your forms in to Katie Bryant, our Director of Youth Ministry this week, as it's getting close to the Sunday, which we'll celebrate and recognize you as well. As you'll see, we have um, opportunities coming up. Uh, Vacation Bible School is coming. Some of the particular needs we have for adults to help are listed in the bulletin. So I draw your attention there and hope that you'll help us to make that a wonderful uh, week for our children. And also as we continue through this stewardship season, if you've not yet returned your pledge cards and time and talent forms, I encourage you to do so as soon as possible. If you have been raising butterflies, it's just a little cold for us to release them after this service, but I do invite you to come back at noon uh, after the 11 o'clock service and we'll release those butterflies together or just uh, have an opportunity to uh, release them yourself later today. My friends, this is the joyful day that the Lord has made. We rejoice in it as we continue to worship God. Sisters and brothers in Christ, with the joy of resurrection ringing in our hearts, let us now confess our sin, knowing that by Christ rising from the dead, death and sin have been defeated, and we have the victory of eternal life. Let us pray first together the prayer found in your bulletin, and then individually with our, our individual prayers of confession. Let us pray. Resurrected Christ, there is nothing we can do to deserve the grace you give us. There is no way we can earn your love. There is no way we can be worthy of your forgiveness. 
and yet you shower these mercies on us. You, who have taken away the sting of death, meet us where we are, in our doubt and fear, in our regrets and shame, in our delight and awe. Meet us here in this place and call us once again to trust in you. Amen. When Christ comes to reign, he will put every enemy under his feet, and the last enemy to be destroyed is death. And as we await that great and glorious day, we rejoice in the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. We stand. Our first scripture reading for today comes from Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 3, verses 1 through 4, as we hear one of Paul's summaries of the good news of Easter. Let us hear this word of God. So, if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things on the earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. At this time, let me invite our young friends and children to come and uh, spend a few moments together with me here on the steps. If you are watching from home, I hope that you will draw near to the screen so that you might be a part of this special time together as well. Good morning. Good morning. How are y'all today? Good. Happy Easter. Thank you so much for being here and being a part of our worship service. Happy Easter. That's right. Worship is always better when you're here and especially today. Thank you so much for coming and being a part of our special service together this morning. 
Well, you know, the story of Easter is a story that is full of great joy, but there are also some things, you know, that might seem a little strange to us, right? And things that might make us, you know, a little nervous. In Matthew's story, which we're going to hear in just a minute, everybody at the tomb is scared, right? There are guards that are placed there to make sure that no one takes Jesus' body. There's an earthquake There's an angel that comes and descends from the sky, and the guards are so afraid that they faint. The women are afraid too. But then the angel tells them, fear not. Do not be afraid. That's right. And the woman, um, when Jesus, uh, after they talk with the angel, the angel tells them that they should go and tell the disciples that Jesus has been raised from the dead. And they meet Jesus as they go, and guess what he tells them? He says, Fear not. Do not be afraid, right? Do not be afraid. And you know what that means? It means that God is stronger than the worst evil or anything that could happen to us. No matter what happens, God is always going to be with us. And that's one of the things that we celebrate on Easter Sunday, is that we know that God loves us so much that even though Jesus died for us, that he rose again from the dead so that we might celebrate and know that God is going to be with us always and that we don't have to be afraid because we can trust that God keeps that promise and is always going to be stronger than anything that could possibly happen to us. That's pretty good news, isn't it? Yeah, can you all remember that with me? So we do not have to be afraid. Very good. All right, well, thanks again. Let's pray together and um, I'll pray a little bit and then you can repeat after me, okay? Let's pray. Dear God, Uh, We thank you you. for the good news of Easter. Easter. Jesus is alive, alive. and we don't have to be afraid. afraid. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you all so much for coming up today. Hold on just a second. If you are in first grade or younger, I want to invite you to go to children and worship or to nursery. You can go with Miss Catherine and some of the folks who are out the door. If you're in second grade or older, then I want to invite you to continue to worship with your family. So it is, we are grateful that you are here with us for worship today. Got a few extra messages there before cut. <laughs> Our second scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew from chapter 28. We'll read verses 1 through 10. This is the day that we've been waiting for. This is the day to which our entire Holy Week has pointed from the moment of his arrival in Jerusalem last Sunday when the whole city was in turmoil. Jesus has been in conflict with the authorities and the chief priests. And finally, those leaders have managed to succeed in their plot against Jesus. He's crucified as a common criminal. Upon the cross, at the moment of his death, Jesus cries out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And he breathed his last curtain in the temple is torn in two. The earth shook and tombs were opened. His death complete, a rich man named Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, asked the Roman governor Pilate if he could have Jesus' body. He prepared it, placed it in a new tomb. And yet still the chief priests were worried. They thought that someone might steal Jesus' body. And so they asked Pilate to have guards placed there to prevent such a theft. We join the story the next morning. Let us hear this word of God. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. 
His appearance was like lightning, his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him. They took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth, meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Some of you will know that prior to being called to serve here at Unity in Fort Mill, I was a pastor in Augusta, Georgia for seven years. And Augusta is the home of a little golf tournament called the Masters that is actually being played this week. And it was a great gift that many of the years in Augusta, our family and I were able to attend the tournament, as they call it there. Well, one memorable year was Tournament Sunday in 2019. Tiger Woods, the greatest golfer of his generation, and in conversation as one of the greatest of all time, had returned to Augusta after a series of injuries and surgeries. A few months before, it was doubtful that he was going to play. But that year, Woods ended up playing very well and was in the final group with the tournament leaders just two shots back when play began Sunday morning. Now, Augusta National has held on to many of its traditions. And one of those is that the leaderboards on the course are still updated by hand. A volunteer who is working for the tournament gets word of a score change via an earpiece radio, and then they have to put the results of each hole for each player onto the leaderboard. The patrons or the spectators are not allowed to have cell phones, no other communication devices, so they have to rely on these leaderboards to know how their favorites are doing. Well, I remember that Sunday afternoon. We were standing by the tee box for the 17th hole, actually just 5 to 10 yards from where those trees came down, if you've been watching the tournament this week. Well, Tiger and his group were playing the 15th hole. And according to the leaderboard, there were 12, there were five players, including Tiger, now tied for the lead at 12 under par. We heard a crowd roar on the 15th hole, but we didn't know what had happened. So we waited on the leaderboard. The person running the board slowly opened the slot for each player in the final group and groans emerged from the patrons as the number dropped for one of the leaders indicating that he had made a double bogey and was now two shots behind the others. But the slot by Tiger Woods' name remained open, creating increased dramatic tension. When suddenly, with a big slap, a birdie, one under par for Tiger, appeared on the leaderboard. And the roar from the patrons was deafening. Tiger went on to win the Masters that year by a single stroke. But that was the moment. That number being slapped onto the leaderboard after that dramatic pause when we knew that something big, something that had changed everything, had happened. Of the gospel writers, I think that Matthew, 
just like that leaderboard volunteer, has the greatest flair for the dramatic, at least as he tells us these Easter Sunday accounts. It's on the first day of the week. Matthew tells us that because of fear, fear is gripping this scene, that guards are stationed around a sealed tomb when two women show up. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, probably Jesus' mother, they'd been to this place before after watching Jesus die on the cross. They'd seen Joseph roll the great stone over the entrance of the tomb. Yes, they'd watched it all. And yet still, on the day after the Sabbath, they return. They come to see the tomb, probably to weep a bit, to pay their respects Maybe even to talk to the dead as if being in the place where the body remained would allow Jesus to hear them better. They probably knew that the guards were there, but it didn't really matter to them. At least as Matthew's telling us this story, they're not planning on opening the tomb. I doubt the guards even paid them much attention. These women were going to steal a body? Not likely. It's a dramatic pause. But then the fun starts. I don't know about you, but when I read these next verses in Matthew's account of Easter morning, I can't help but smile or even chuckle a bit. This really is a comic story. Can you imagine God sitting up there in the heavens, turning to the angels and saying something like, those guards are fearful because they think someone's going to steal the body. Well, they ain't seen nothing yet. Watch this. Suddenly the earth begins to shake, just as it had at the moment of Jesus' death on the cross. A great earthquake as an angel descends from the heavens, rolls back the stone, and sits on it. Whoa! Appearance like lightning, clothes whiter than snow, the seal on the tomb is broken. It's almost as if he sits there and says, ta-da! Do you see how much fun this story is? This is the moment when we know that something big, something that's changed everything has happened. What's next? Will the body come out? Will the crucified king of the Jews emerge to conquer his enemies? Would he begin with these guards who had thought that this would be such an easy assignment? So many questions, so much terror. The guards shook and became like dead men, paralyzed in their fright. Really, how can we not smile at that? They were tasked with one thing, right? To make sure that a dead body stayed in the tomb. And yet, when the tomb is opened, they become like dead men. This is a comic story. As the Protestant reformer Martin Luther once wrote, through Christ's death and by virtue of his resurrection, death has become a mockery. At this point, the angels start talking to the women. They are the only ones still standing at this point, right? And the angel's words, I'm sure with a twinkle in his eye, are such a sharp contrast to the guards laying out on the ground. He says, don't you be afraid. Or an even better translation, as for you, stop being afraid. The New Testament scholar Judith Jones writes, the angel is commanding them to reject their current state of fear, for his news brings great joy. I know that you are looking for Jesus, the crucified one. He is not here. He's been raised, just as he said. The resurrection has already happened. The stone had been rolled away, not to let Jesus out, but to let the witnesses in. In the midst of a story that begins with all the markings of tragedy and fear, resurrection is surprising. Say we might even say comic Despite the fact that Jesus has told them multiple times of his return, no one in the story anticipates resurrection.
I'm going to pause just a moment. I think all is okay.
Thanks be to God for good care and for God's good grace among us. So we turn to this story. We know that no one on Good Friday anticipates resurrection. No one in, on Easter Sunday morning anticipates resurrection. It appears as if tragedy and death will have the final word. The guards are placed by the empty tomb so that no one can steal a body. The women arrive at the tomb to mourn and to bear watch. But instead, there's this earthquake, there's an angel, there's a rolling stone, a body is gone, and the message, he is risen. So the message of that first Easter morning, the good news of this Easter morning, is not that there's nothing to be afraid of. It's not that bad things won't happen or that if you risk your life or step out in faith that you won't get hurt. All of the fears that we carry with us, all of the fears we read in the newspaper or online, everything that remains in the back of our heads as we gather for worship this morning, that part of life doesn't change. But the good news of Easter is that the resurrection enables the women to keep their faith amid their fears. They left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy. And they run to tell the disciples. They're empowered to go to share the good news despite their anxiety. When the earthquakes and fear descends, resurrection enables them to keep our feet and to persevere, and not just persevere, but even to flourish with great joy. This resulting joy is, as former dean of Union Presbyterian Seminary at Charlotte, Tom Curry writes, not a mood, it's a gift. It's a gift that issues in a certain boldness of spirit, a kind of unapologetic delight in the beauty and the truth of Easter, which soon takes its form as proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and unhindered. My beloved friends, to be Easter Christians is to know this kind of joy. Fear, pain, and death linger, but they will not laugh last. They are trumped by joy, which came to the whole world through a cross. The tomb stands empty. Jesus is going ahead of us. We will see him again. Even in the midst of suffering and tragedy, we know that he, he shows up calling us by name. Yes, after the dramatic pause, as the earth shakes and the stone is rolled away, this is the day we know that something big, something that has changed everything has happened. So let us raise a roar so loud they can hear us among those azaleas in Augusta. For on this Easter Sunday, we have good news of great joy. Do not be afraid. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. My friends, in response to hearing Scripture read and proclaimed, I do invite you as you are able to stand that together we might declare what it is that we believe. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, the Lord is risen indeed. This is the good news we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved. Hallelujah, the Lord is risen indeed. That Christ died for our sins and was buried and rose again on the third day. Hallelujah, the Lord is risen indeed. He appeared to Peter and to the twelve and to many faithful witnesses. Hallelujah, the Lord is risen indeed. At last he came to us that we might come to believe and proclaim this good news to the world. Hallelujah, the Lord is risen indeed. You may be seated. Let us now join our hearts together in a time of prayer. Let us pray. 
God of love, the world around us is different today because of you. Signs of new life and new beginnings are everywhere. We rejoice and celebrate this day, for this is the day that the stones of our lives are rolled aside and the mantle of darkness is lifted. This is the day when hope dawns anew and the morning brings forth new creation. This is the day that we celebrate the resurrection of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And yet, just as the women mourned and trembled with fear on the very morning that Christ rose from the grave, there are many of your children who still live with brokenness, sadness, and tragedy despite the presence of the risen Christ. There are those of your children who mourn and are troubled, who feel their lives have lost meaning. Touch them today, we pray. Touch them with your transforming resurrection power that their sadness may become joy, their despair may become hope, and their defeats become victories. For it is your transforming love that frees us from our self-made tombs and allows us to rise once again to be the people you have created us to be. It is your transforming spirit that enables us to reach out to our sisters and brothers that they might escape the crosses of poverty and injustice. It is your transforming presence that gives us meaning and purpose and new direction. What a wondrous gift you have given us this day, O oh God. You have shown us once again that nothing, nothing can defeat your love for us. All of our suffering can be redeemed and transformed by the creative power of your spirit. We are your Easter people, made alive by Christ's rising. The world around us is different today because of you. We praise you, O risen Christ, and because you are alive, we are bold to pray as you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, all that we seek to accomplish, all that we strive to achieve, all that we claim to possess, all of this amounts to nothing. Nothing without the grace of Jesus Christ. But thanks be to God that the grace of the risen Christ has been poured so abundantly into our lives. And so now let us respond. Let us respond by bringing to our Lord the tithes and the offerings of our hearts and of our hands.
let us pray. We praise and thank you, bountiful God, for all good gifts you bestow upon us. We offer but a portion of that bounty, O God. Receive our gifts as we seek to walk in your way. Where justice is sought, use these gifts to bring Christ's liberating word. Where there is pain, may they bring healing in Christ's love. We pray in the name of him who intercedes on our behalf, Jesus Christ, our risen and living Lord. Amen. My friends, we go forth from this place, we go with this good news, this good news of great joy that Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. So as our service of worship ends, may our lives of worship and service and proclamation begin. And may the God who has blessed us with love and peace and joy and hope be with us this day and each day that is to come. 
For Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. There is no need to be afraid.